Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about patient assessment. When I hear a certain lung sound, what might be going on? We're gonna go through it all, here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here. I'm so excited to deliver this video to you. Do me a solid, smash that like button down below. Somebody out there hit the like button for you to see this video. So give back and do it for somebody else and make sure to hit subscribe so you can see more of this great EMS content. Now, today's a big topic. We got the mannequin out. We're talking about patient assessment. When I see a certain lung sound, what might be going on with your patient? Now, this is so important. If somebody complains of difficulty breathing, I can't breathe, they're tripod, they're short of breath, we need to be able, it's so important, we need to be able to get a good set of lung sounds that will put us in the right direction. Yes, with the respiratory rate. Yes, with pulse oximetry. Yes, with vital signs. Yes, with history. But this is one of the most important things in lung sounds. So let's break these down and we're gonna go through all this. Now here we go. First we have wheezing. Let's say I assess this patient's lung sounds, okay? And I hear wheezing. The mnemonic for wheezing is AAC. So AAC, I'll put right here on the side. AAC, asthma, anaphylaxis, and COPD. Those are the three culprits when we hear wheezing. Now, for my more advanced folks watching this video, you're always going to do an EKG on a patient. If you hear wheezing, yes, there are something called cardiac wheezes. If someone's having a cardiac event, they can wheeze. Do what you're doing an EKG on any patient that's difficulty breathing. I just want to mention that briefly. Now, let's move in to the next, which is going to be ronchi. Here we go. Well, hold on. Just before we move into ronchi, let's quickly just briefly talk about two big pearls with AAC. If we have an asthma or a COPD patient and they're having an attack, a flare-up, there's going to be tightness in their chest. So chest tightness, a buzzword. The other buzzword is that they're going to have a productive cough. So tight chest, productive cough, that's going to be your AAC. Don't forget with anaphylaxis, strider, that upper airway sound, hives, two or more body systems being affected makes you an anaphylaxis, okay? When you start seeing blood pressure changes going down, anaphylactic shock. We wanna treat them, right? If he's an anaphylaxis, we wanna treat him as soon as possible. We don't wait when we get aggressive, we treat early, okay? Now, ronchi means junk in the lungs. So what that means is we have a hypersecretion of, like I said, junk infection, inflammation going on in the lungs. Where wheezing is a tightness of the bronchial tree, ronchi is, well, I have an infection in my bronchial tree, right? So we think of pneumonia. Now, if this patient has had pneumonia, maybe for a few days, maybe even a week, ronchi, right? Now, here's a question. Check me out here, it's super important. I want to talk about unilateral versus bilateral lung sounds. Unilateral means one side. Bilateral means both sides, okay? So, we can have an ammonia on both sides or one side. Now, I'll tell you, pneumonia is most common on one side, but it could be both. So, we have to look at other signs and symptoms. The big one, fever, hot skin, give you one more, that productive cough, but this time it's green or yellow sputum, okay? That infection pathway. Now here's rails. Okay, now if, if this patient right here, I listen, I hear rails. If I hear rails bilaterally, I'm thinking more CHF because it's more common, but we don't stop there. CHF flare-up, if it was starting in the beginning of that process, I might have JVD. I might have edema in my legs. Well, I can hear pulmonary edema, which blood coming into my, my lung fields, right, in CHF. CHF means the heart is failing as a pump. We know blood backs up in the system, okay? CHF. Now, the thing is, an early onset pneumonia could have rails. So the question is, 
Is it on one side or the other? But remember, it's a big key here. CHF and ammonia both cough up, correct. But one's coughing up pink frothy sputum, CHF, and the other one's coughing up green or yellow sputum, ammonia. There's a big differentiator. And CHF is not gonna have a fever, it's not gonna have hot skin. It'd be quite the opposite, actually, if they're t going towards cardiogenic shock. With me? Okay. Now let's go, we're gonna talk about diminished and absent, and we'll continue on. You may hear out in the field or on exam about diminished lung sounds, right? Diminished lung sounds means really that you can't hear the lung sounds good enough, right? It's diminished. The patient is either so tight in the bronchial tree or there's so much fluid that you cannot hear what's going on. This diminished lung sounds and absent lung sounds are the most sinister signs you can see. Now here's the deal. If I have diminished lung sounds, okay, let's say it was bilateral diminished lung sounds. This could be a whole host of things, okay, whole host. But when we talk about exams or what's happening on the field, this is what we got to look at our other signs and symptoms. If he has diminished lung sounds bilaterally, that could be almost anything. So what are the other signs and symptoms? I want to talk about pulmonary embolism and pneumothorax. Okay, if this goes back to my unilateral versus bilateral, a pneumothorax would have diminished lung sounds on one side, right, versus the other. So let's say it was the right side, right, that was diminished. As a, pneum as a pneumothorax on this side, there would be JVD, a late sign tracheal deviation. As the pressure moves over, and the heart's over here, and it puts pressure on the heart, trachea shifts, mediastinal shift. We have JVD because the heart's failing as a pump. So blood backs up, okay? A pulmonary embolism, remember, a pulmonary embolism has nothing to do with the bronchial tree. You could have clear lung sounds in a pulmonary embolism, but the reason that they could be diminished in uh, pulmonary uh, embolism is, well, the lungs are dying. It's a lung attack. So a bad pulmonary embolism, there's no blood supply going to the lung tissue, right? It's a blockage of the pulmonary artery tracts. So it's not impossible for that to happen, okay? Key point, okay? Now, remember the big thing here. We're talking about unilateral or bilateral. Pneumothorax, I'll say it again, is gonna be one side or the other. Diminished lung sounds on one side is the most common way of pneumothorax. Now let's talk about absent. Now, absent lung sounds. Two things come to mind. If I hear absence, man, the first thing I'm thinking about is a pneumothorax, again, if it's unilateral. Okay, right on one side, I'm thinking tension, tension pneumothorax, okay, with my other sign symptoms. One mentioned earlier, I'll mention now, is gonna be hypotension, okay, tachycardia hypotension, right? Now, here's an interesting one. Think about this, okay, hang with me. If I am wheezing, okay, with asthma or anaphylaxis or COPD, what's happening is, my bronchial tree is getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. What if the bronchial tree gets so tight that there's not even any air exchange? Wouldn't you have absent lung sounds, like there's no air movement? Because what you're hearing with the wheezing is a tightening of the air movement. So an absent chest in the presence of someone having an AAC event, an asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD event, they could have absent lung sounds. Would it be unilateral or bilateral? It would be bilateral in AAC. Everything in AAC is bilateral, okay? You with me? My friends, this was your lung sound assessment. I got one more message for you. Hey, I'm so happy you made it and watched this entire video. You're gonna see the first link in the description down below. It is my video study course that includes over 400 videos of content prep for all the schools, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, national registry prep for EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, full length drug cards that go through the whiteboard and we go through all of that. If you wanna get this stuff down cold and understand your EMS class and national registry at the highest level possible, click the link down below. Just for watching this video, I will give you a lifetime access to the course. My friends, thank you so much for watching this channel. I'll see you around, take care. Waste, don't waste any time, don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school. 
from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to. They need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. Take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple to pass the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. Took this with three weeks left to go in my class. And I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.